Hey, how you doing? Today I want to talk to you about creating emotional guitar solos. And the thing about emotional guitar solos is it isn't always just about the note. It's about what's happening behind the note. It's about how you execute the note. And of course, it's about the note too. It can occasionally also come from the instrument that you are playing that really helps you get to that sweet spot. My buddies at Framus sent me this Panthera 2 Supreme. You can check out the specs linked in the description. But it is just one of those guitars that makes you play with great care. And that is the first ingredient for creating emotional guitar solos, is to really care about what it is you are playing. And when I say care about what you're playing, I really mean it. You know sometimes when you put on a backing track or are playing in a live jam or something, and you kind of just go to your default licks, like I know this is gonna sound good, and I know this is really gonna be satisfying to play, but you're not necessarily thinking about what you're doing. You're kind of just letting it all go. Uh, that is totally cool, but when I think of emotional guitar solos, I actually, am very cognizant of which notes I am targeting. So that leads us to the next piece of the puzzle, which is targeting specific intervals. If you've never heard of intervals, check out Guitar Super System, also linked down in the description, and you can learn from me about what those are. But essentially, they are your favorite notes against whatever harmony chords are happening behind you. So we're gonna have a chord progression that goes A minor to C major, so you can think about that in the context of the G major scale, in this case, A Dorian. So very quickly, let me just tell you why I did what I did. Obviously that was extremely simple, but the point is I was looking for intervals that I liked against the chords. So if we have this A, the first note I played was the fourth. So I can understand if I like that note or not. And then subsequently we came up to the C. And this, of course, is the fifth, a G. And then I went through the same process looking for different intervals which were labeled over that little, uh, I wouldn't call it an improv, but just a little search party, if you will. And there are some notes that I like more than others and some notes that maybe sound a bit more basic, such as root notes. So one of my favorite lessons is from Paul Gilbert when he said, when you improvise, try and avoid the root note and see how it affects your playing. So now I'm gonna do the same thing again, but I'm going to target certain notes that I think are particularly expressive against this type of harmony, this minor harmony. And those will be sort of dissonant notes like nines or sixth, sixths, that's a hard word to say. Sixth and other major seven, minor seven type things. And once I demonstrate those very simply like I did initially, I will start to blend these things together and then break down what I was thinking.
as you heard there, I began to mix in a couple little techniques along with the intervals that I enjoyed hearing over the harmony. And some of those techniques I'll give you a little playbook for now. So one of these little flicks that I like to use is when I'm on a note, I have a couple of diatonic notes surrounding me. And of course these notes are not in the key, but that doesn't mean we can't use them. So when you find yourself in a box that you're used to, say we're in this A minor shape, we can actually use those out of tune notes or out of key notes very effectively and emotionally by simply flicking them. So instead of very simple, right? That's kind of basic sounding, but if used correctly in the right time, so in some sort of context, I will split this to give us a little bit less gain. anywhere you find yourself uh, in these scale positions, finding an out of tune or out of key note uh, to just kind of slide around. Some more examples. So extremely expressive and you're noticing that I'm not attacking that flick with a pick. It's just use from the uh, strength of my finger is executing that motion. So that's what I think gives it its emotional quality. It's a little bit more delicate that way, as opposed to if you were like. Now there are other techniques to achieve an emotional guitar solo, primarily bending. Having strong bending technique and intonation is probably the most important thing for no matter what kind of guitar solo you're playing, but especially when you're trying to be as expressive and emotional as possible, insert David Gilmore here. What I think is equally important in this context is actually breathing. And I do mean that literally. You can let your solos breathe by not playing many notes uh, and kind of letting each note happen and each phrase sit on its own as opposed to really trying to string everything together with bridges and bridges of more notes. Literally breathing is actually going to help you play with more emotion and actually think about which note you're going to attack next. And I find it's a really kind of difficult thing to do for guitar players because we're always trying to fill in the space. And the reason for that is because, I don't know, it's like some weird mental strife, like we're inadequate if we're not playing. And I think that is obviously not a true thing and we should be very cognizant of the fact that leaving space can actually be the most important part of a guitar solo especially when we're talking about emotional guitar playing. So with all that said, I'm going to try and concoct a little emotional guitar solo of my own, targeting intervals that I enjoy, leaving space, throwing in a couple little flicks and flourishes, and generally paying attention to what it is I'm trying to say with my music. I hope this was a helpful lesson for you guys. Check out the Framus Panthera 2 if you are on the market for an amazing sounding instrument. And until next time, keep shredding.